the Seeger Blast, and we've got to get this thing cleaned up, we've got to get it torn down, and, uh, and that will be the focus of this episode. So the first thing we're going to remove is this front panel. Don't really have to do this, but given that I want to take this off and clean it up and swap over the controls anyway, I may as well get it off. Uh, and it's just a lot easier to handle when this is completely removed. So same as the Astro City, one, two, three, four, should be fifth one there, it's missing. Take those five off and we can take this off. There we go, removed. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this lock because I need to replace the actual whole lock itself. Otherwise the lock bar is, is uh, staying locked at the moment. I can't undo it because the, uh, the key is missing. So I'm just gonna take this top off. Remove the, uh, the top of the lock. And now that's, uh, that stays free. Next thing to do is to remove these plugs. Now we're going to remove the monitor bezel. And so to do that, there's actually, it's a bit different to the Astro City. On the blast, I'm going to be able to see that in there, but there is actually a tab. See that? There's a tab there. And the same on the other side. Okay. And here there's another tab. So what I need to do is be able to pull pull on those two tabs and that should release that front um, monitor surround. So let's do that now. As I was removing that, there was two little metal lugs up the top here. So when you get the uh, the, the monitor surround out, you just sort of bring it, look, bring it up and lift it up over those two tabs. So next we're going to take the monitor out and we're going to do that before we remove this front panel. Only because there seems to be a little bit of um, difference of opinion in relation to the removing of this front uh, control panel while the monitor is still in and as I this is the first time I've done it uh, I'm not going to take any risks and I'm going to take the monitor out first because some people say that uh, that when you take this front panel out the bolts that are in here are somehow holding up the uh, monitor surround holding and even though it will still stay there because there's a couple of screws apparently up above um, I don't know if it's going to put some undue force on there or not. So let's be safe. It doesn't really matter for us. We can just uh, take the monitor out first and, uh, and then we can carry on with the rest of the dismantle. So the first thing we need to do, of course, we've got to discharge that monitor. Let's do that. So we need to remove this back panel so we can get access to the back of the monitor. those two screws and then that back plate simply comes out right so now that we have that back plate off you'll notice uh, remember I don't have a monitor chassis which would normally be sitting in this tray here so you'll probably have one so you need to disconnect that chassis but of course we need to discharge the monitor first and you should as well now you will have an anode cup uh, sitting on top of your monitor where that red dot is when I don't have one because my chassis is not here I'm still going to discharge that though because these things can build up a charge on their own even without power uh, it's strange but true so I am going to uh, discharge the monitor just to be safe uh, but then once that's done then normally you would then have to disconnect uh, your chassis and there's a couple of other videos that I've got that show you how uh, you can do that so check out those I do have this monitor uh, Molex connector um, which is going down to the uh, that'll be the RGB and the uh, ACN for the monitor so that needs to be removed uh, other than that I'm just going to check and make sure that there is no earthing cable connected to the uh, monitor tube and make sure that's removed once I've done all that then I'll be ready to lift the monitor out 
Okay, you won't be able to see me actually discharge this, but you've seen it on other videos and you can always check online on how to do it as well. Uh, so I'm just uh, going to go up and touch the anode entry on the tube, making sure I don't touch anything else. There we go. And absolutely nothing coming out of there so that's all good and discharged. Now to unplug that Molex connector. So when we've removed the monitor now this whole chassis cage will come out with it. So let's remove the four monitor bolts first and just remember you don't want to remove the actual screws just for the tube we want to remove the whole frame uh, with the monitor chassis which you would obviously have in yours so yeah let's take these four nuts off and uh, remember the monitor frame will stay on the bolt head so don't worry it won't fall down so just take all four off Okay guys, now for the fun bit, <laughs> oh, this heavy, heavy, heavy monitors. Uh, now I, I wear these gardening gloves just to protect the hands against the metal because the metal is pretty sharp and these are pretty heavy so I do recommend wearing some sort of gloves like this. Obviously it does, again this doesn't protect you from any you know, electricity or anything so make sure you uh, uh, de uh, depower the, the monitor, ground it before you remove it. So. The other thing to check is just to make sure that there is no ground wire coming from the monitor connected to the chassis because the last thing you want is when you've got this up in the air is to have it pulling on a ground uh, wire that you haven't removed. Now I couldn't see one connected so let's hope there isn't one <laughs> otherwise you're going to see me doing a bit of a balancing act here. Alright so uh, let's get this monitor out and onto the floor. Okay guys, it's out. That was actually a bit tougher than the Astro City. Hard to get your hand in underneath that bit. But as you saw there, what I did is I tilted the front of the top out and made sure it was still resting on the bottom lugs. Then I could get my hand around it and then lift it out. But yeah, that was uh, that seemed a lot more difficult than the Astro City. Not sure why, but anyway, I, I've got to remember when I put it back in, I'm going to have to do the same thing balance it onto the to the bottom lugs first and then push it back to the top anyway it's out thank goodness right now the monitor's removed we can uh, remove this front panel the six main bolts removed and then we have to remove these two top screws.
and there we go. So the next thing we're going to take out is the marquee. So let's get that out. It's quite simple. There's two screws up the top here or two bolts. Uh, I don't know, mine don't look like they are very original. This one's missing completely. So uh, whatever you've got up there, you just remove those two and then the marquee will come straight out. Okay, so before we take the back plate off, this plate here, we just need to unplug the uh, marquee uh, power and, and, and ground plugs uh, because that whole marquee piece comes off with the back panel. So let's unplug those now. Okay, now uh, those are now unplugged. So we can take this back piece off. Okay guys, so now we're going to remove this back plate. And there should be screws here. I've got a couple missing on mine and a few oddball ones. But you'll have screws all the way around here. So just undo all of these and this back plate will come off. balance that when you take that last screw out I'm gonna to have to change those screws guys because <laughs> they were the wrong screws on there that's for sure so we can separate the cab we have to remove this top plate uh, which has got those two metal hooks hooking around the front there so we need to take out these two screws and then uh, pull that plate out so there's two more screws that we have to do to take this back plate out they're actually located just inside the holders here so the handle grips so just take these two screws out here and then that'll then take this plate out and this should now lift out like so so I've obviously removed the front access panel which is easy enough you guys would know how to do that and now we just need to remove these uh, two uh, side doors the one for the coin box area and the one for the coin mech so coin mech looks like we pop around the back here coin mech has got a little connector here we can undo that uh, and the other earthing screw there undo that and so those cables will come together with the door and then it's just a matter of unscrewing uh, these three screws and then that whole metal door comes off so that's how we remove that one and which is very similar to the Astro City and likewise with the bottom one here I believe we have uh, some screws around the edge which again much like Astro City and a couple on the door there which we may need to remove first by the looks of it and there's one screw down in the base there so I'll take out all of those and we'll see if we can get this bottom cage to come out as well Okay, now this coin box I believe is held in from underneath the cab, so we have to turn it over to get to, I think, the three screws that are there. Uh, but we're now ready anyway to turn the machine on its front, 
and uh, and then we can start on the sides to separate them and then unscrew the base as well as the coin box. So let's do that now. Right, so we have the machine on its back and we can see there's an obvious row of JIS screws. Remember those very square cross shaped screws. We'll need an impact screwdriver to get those out. But there's a whole row of them up the side here and the same on the other side. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll remove those. And then on the base, there's quite a lot of individual screws that hold up the, uh, the base here. So all of those will come out. Uh, plus, I believe we need to remove the wheels. Uh, and this, as these bottom ones here are also attached to the, to the base. And unlike the Sega Astro City, which really came apart in two pieces and the base was part of one of the pieces, the bottom piece here is completely separate, so we will have to unscrew the whole thing here, get that bottom piece off, then the two side pieces will completely come apart. I'm going to get it, get started and get unscrewing all of those now. Remember these three here for the coin box, so those have to come out too. Okay, this one here is actually bird, unfortunately. So I was just in a little bit too tight there and I was a little bit loose on the uh, impact drill. You really have to put pressure on it so it doesn't spin. So we'll come back to that last. Okay, well I don't have any other choice. I'm gonna have to drill these last ones out. Uh, the threads are all burnt on them now. Uh, just goes to show you've got to have that real right amount of pressure. Or oh, they'll just do that. Then once they start bearing, that's it. You just can't get enough um, surface area on a Phillips bit in one of these JIS screws, and so it just spins. So. Oh well, I shall go ahead and drill these ones out and then uh, we'll do the side ones. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've, got, I've still got two, there's two little screws, there's one just under here, see this guy here? I'm going to be real careful taking that one out. And we have the same on this side of course, peeking its head out under there. So I've got to take those out. We need to also um, unscrew these feet. So these need to be unscrewed and come out. But other than that, as you can see my plan here, um, you can see this whole bottom piece here will, will come away from the base. Now I've got that one out because that was holding on to that side of the base. So all these ones around here I can bring out and that will get the two halves off. Of course I've got to take the screws out of here. That's the final job. Once I've done that, it's coming apart. But then this back piece will stay connected to this piece here. Um, when the original plan was, I was going to completely dismantle it. But as I said, this is not a bad thing. We can we can at least stand it up. It will still be on its base with the back, and we can get inside and do all the wiring and clean it up. So that's fine. But if you did want to take that off, then yeah, you would need to take off uh, these bolts on the wheels as well. Um, you would need to remove the the power supply. Now I've, got, I've just got a back plate here, remember? So you would have a full power supply, and you'd probably take that out first, to be honest. That's a completely separate unit. You could do that really as step one. Okay, guys. So now I'm going to uh, just take out those last screws, take out the bottom piece, and then I am going to take out the side rails, and then we're done. Let's get on with it. Okay guys, this is the final step and I'm just going to take these side ones off and we can pull it apart and we're done. Good news guys, it is done. I've got this thing apart. Now what I wanted to quickly show you is that just while I was testing to see if I could get it apart and get this front piece away from the base there was two additional screws here that I need to tell you about. One there and one there, which obviously I've taken out. But they go through the um, through the bottom 
uh, metal plate that sits across the front which I, I guess stops dirt from getting into the cabinet and that plate has some holes on the top of it here which line up on top of the, the bottom plate there and then that screw goes through both of them which secures the front so yeah I got the last screw out from the bottom here which was actually holding the uh, coin box surround uh, to the base and it was one of those threaded screws the last threaded screw and I had to get that last one out I had a few of those guys it was not pleasant but it's done and now I can pull this completely this front completely away from the back and guys finally finally we have it we have it apart okay and just before I take it all apart I just noticed that the uh, the wiring which is connected to the cab back up here is uh, also screwed down here including the common connection for the earthing lug so I'll just unscrew those and then we'll be able to take the cabinet apart I might have a few extra cables I need to I oh, know these are completely separate so that's fine as they go off to the monitor which of course we don't have in here anymore so yeah I just need to remove these uh, these couple of screws here and that one and then we can uh, take it apart and guys there it is <laughs> the money shot ah oh, finally <laughs> finally apart oh my goodness oh, what a sigh of relief seriously <laughs> than that other than the the, the the bolts problem you know it comes apart you know well, I'm not gonna say relatively easily but it comes apart and now we can focus on the wiring obviously now I can do it give it a good decent clean out of this apart and sort out the wiring so I'm going to put together a plan again like I did with the Astro City so if you want to see how I rewire this cab I am going to wire it up for jammer and we'll have to put a switching power supply in here because the original blast uh, power supply is not in there there is a, a passive um, distribution board that's part of the, the, the Sega Blast as standard and uh, I need to figure out that and make sure that I can if I can utilize that that board with the existing cabling again I don't want to hack up cabling if it's not necessary I try and use everything original as much as I can and that way if you know later on if it needs to be further you know pulled back with a PCB or whatever then it, then it can be uh, done that way guys if you like this sort of videos then please subscribe give it a like thumbs up and if it helped you in any way I hope it did um, yeah please check out this series wiring's next once the wiring's in then we'll be uh, setting up a raspberry jammer and we'll be sorting out a chassis for the monitor and we'll be testing all that out of the case and then it's all going back together and then we'll have a beautiful blast to sit next to the Astro City. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for that. Anyway, guys, till next time, ciao for now.